Okay, let's uh, start. This is the last lecture of Tadashi. Okay. So let me start with a uh, with a more update issue, what is called entanglement wedge. Okay. So first, start with a quantum correction to holographic entanglement entropy. This was worked out by <coughs> Faulkner and Urkowitz and Maldacena in 2013. So this quantum correction means there's some quantum gravity one loop corrections. And in terms of the gauge theory, it's like one over n correction. So we have entanglement entropy and the previous classic formula, classical formula, compute uh, leading term, which is like order this area term is a uh, order one over G Newton. And there is a next leading contribution, which is order one, and there is a higher which is like including uh, order G Newton and some power, more higher power. So we are interested in this next leading contribution about one of an expansion, or namely Newton constant expansion. And uh, actually, but we can imagine what's happening here in the very intuitive level. So I'm not going to detail, but we can give some intuitive argument. So we can think about uh, maybe we can think about some. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So maybe we can see some Poincare ADS and Z direction, and we have some region A, and we have some geodesic or some minimal surface, which we call gamma A. Right? And the point is that in replicatoric, we have to compute always trace law to the nth power. That means we put some 2 pi n. And previously, I just explained some derivation of holographic formula. And uh, that allows us some approximate computation by this, some deficit angle surface, right, inside the bulk. So let's assume this approximation is okay because we are just taking n goes to one limit. Uh, exactly the same reason what we did uh, last time. And then this is just obviously just a two pi n periodicity everywhere in the bulk space time and localized on this. This is much like just entanglement entropy calculation in full space time, in bulk space. So there should be just bulk entanglement entropy contribution. And indeed, this next leading term is just bulk entanglement entropy. So maybe we can call this part of the space, or maybe we can cut this way. This is a now Poincaré, this is a global ADS one. We can call this region, this is a minimal surface is gamma A. And we can call some region surrounded by A and gamma is MA. Or this is MA. This is also MA. Then this is an entanglement entropy about the bulk theory with MA for the subsystem MA. So we decompose Hilbert space. Let's assume but still we can use some quantum field theory in the gravity description, like supergravity. You can imagine some scalar field and graviton and fermion. They all contribute to entanglement entropy in the just regarding bulk theory, the quantum field theory. So then we, we have MA and MB, right? And about this decomposition, we can calculate entanglement entropy for full bulk theory. And that contribution is here. So this is actually worked out this FLM paper. And we can also further contribute, I'm not interested in this. And the reading term, so next to reading term looks like this. And then the question is, well, what does this term mean? But this term actually arises even classical level of gravity. This is only happens in classical theory with I, I mean, spins greater than two. So if you think just um, free scalar theory or any scalar theory, as a classical level, there are no, of course, entropy. So this entropy arises because of the very mysterious nature of general relativity or Einstein-Hilbert action. But the reason is very simple. It's topological reason. So as we, we explained, this has some localized contribution if we have a deficit tangle, and there are no such thing in scalar field or derivative of scalar field or field strength or anything like this. So this is very special to gravity, so that's the reason we have this term. 
But this is a standard, just quantum correction. Just, just one loop level, we have entropy. And this is true for any matter theory without gravity. So if we want some entropy, we have to quantize the theory, and uh, we compute one loop partition function, and then we get entropy. So that's, this is quite standard. So in that sense, it's quite natural to have this formula. But this formula tells us something more. That is a, a thing that which we call entanglement wedge. But uh, so we can look at this. So entanglement entropy in CFT is uh, written this way, row log row. But we can write, so this is a, uh, so row log row. But we write this as a, some expectation value of something called the modular Hamiltonian. So modular Hamiltonian just defined as a minus log of reduced density matrix. Modular Hamiltonian. <coughs> On the other hand, we have some this kind of bulk entropy. You can imagine this guy. Okay. It's computed in a similar way. You can compute the bulk density matrix. That means uh, MA. Bulk modular Hamiltonian and bulk, the bulk density matrix. Right? <coughs> bulk. And the difference is uh, area. Right? And then we expect the following relation. Because this, two, this plus area, uh, this plus area gives first one. So HA modular Hamiltonian is described by something called area operator. So we promote this area, it's originally just classical number into some operator. So we just measure the amount of area, minimal surface area, if we give some quantum state. And uh, so we have this modular Hamiltonian in the bulk. Now, well, of course, we have other quantum state. Let's work on this. This level. So this is actually a very impressive formula that so anyway, we, this is something universal. If we assume small perturbation, small quantum corrections, or so that we can only trust, we can trust one loop contribution. So this is kind of universal part. And then, if you change the state, so the point is that entropy is not standard physical observable because, so usually physical observable, expectation value of operator is taken to be the average of operator against some density matrix, right? But this O is now depend on the state because rho A is just log of rho A. So this is not, not the standard physical observable. Instead, it depends on the state. But the point is that, so here, these two guys uh, depend on the state, and uh, this, uh, this part is don't. And uh, then, so these two guys, are, we have some one-to-one -one correspondence between these two guys. So this is true for excited states, weakly excited states. These two guys are depend on the state, but in the same way. And this is what ADS CFT and holographic entanglement entropy tells us about one problem. So that means this allows us to the, introduce the idea of entanglement wage. Uh, many ideas of going, but we, I can recommend this JLMS, Jafari is Rukoitz, Marina Senasu, 2050, a nice argument, and also there are many interesting further results. But this means that we have some of this correspondence. This means that, so we have some density matrix row A right, in CFT. So and it is quite interesting to think about what the dual of this reduced density matrix because this is related to locality issues that if we have some, we know ADS spacetime, ADS is dual to the boundary theory, but if we restrict to the particular region of the boundary, so this region is dual to some region, maybe like this, but what exactly this region? So this is related to this question, very basic question of location of information, so information correspondence between two different information, but this tells us that there are one-to-one -one correspondence if we assume some low energy limit. So that means we have some MA in the bulk density matrix, 
video tension matrix in ADS. This is a gravity. Equal to each other, like other thing in ADS CFT. So, this because of this, we say that if we have a region A, and uh, we now understand precisely what this region means. This is a real region surrounded by this minimal surface and this region A. And so this is the definition of MA. And this MA is called entanglement wedge. <coughs> so in other words, so this region A is dual to the bulk space within this entanglement wedge. So this is a related location problem of ADS safety. So this is a simplest example, but we can think about a little more non-trivial example related to the phase transition to disconnected subsystem. Previously, last time, we explained some phase transition phenomena. So I write a picture. This is, again, global ADS, and you know, inside the ADS and the boundaries this uh, circle, <coughs> like ADS3 global ADS. So let's assume A and B are far apart and they are not, not so large. This case, as we explain, this disconnected guy gives entropy for SAB. So we are interested in this case, so we are interested in the entanglement wedge of which corresponds to rho AB. Right? So we need some bulk uh, region which is called MAB and we wanted to identify this guy. So then, if they are far apart, so that it's a mutual information, we are at it this way, it's zero, then this also identical to this guy, MAB. So these two guys are MAB. So this is MA and MB, but MAB is just a union of these two guys. It's not interesting. And the entanglement wedge is disconnected. This is disconnected. Entanglement wedge is disconnected. We are not so much interested in this, but if they are far more closer to each other or they are larger, gets larger, like A, B, then actually, so here also we can think about this kind of surface, right? But this surface is definitely larger than some of these two surfaces. But here, actually, these two guys, some of these guys is, uh, uh, maybe we can write more clearly, so that maybe cut it here. So then some of these two surfaces larger, are larger, smaller than some of the individual minimal surface area. So this entanglement wedge is turned out to be this connected region, this new place, new region. So this IAB is positive, and then MAB is connected. So this is a more interesting case. <coughs> anyway, so what we, so according to this claim, we run, we, we run that this rho AB in CFT is dual to this region called entanglement wedge. But more precisely, in low range space, we have to take into account time direction, but I, I'm just talking about static state, so I, I'm doing some simple description. So the next question, this is, more, this is a more recent one. Is a, yeah, so this is 3, 4, and let's go 3, 5. So using this idea, so this leads to the idea of so-called holographic Entanglement of purification. This is uh, based on my work with graduate student Kumemoto, uh, 2017. So the idea is, I mean, motivation is very simple. So anyway, we, we run this nice entanglement wedge. So we can extract some interesting so, can I ask you, uh, in, in this case, is the classical piece different in the, I mean, since you're connecting hmm. 
you know. Right, this yeah, like yeah. that, and before you were connecting like that. So the classical piece in the two cases is different, no? Classical, uh, sorry, what do you mean? I, 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 sorry. Uh, if you connect so, yeah, this classical value of mutual information is different. These two guys. So this, uh, this is a phase transition phenomena. If it's gradually enlarging the size of A and B, yeah. it suddenly changes. I see, okay, yeah, yeah. all right. So mutual information is continuous, but suddenly it goes this way. Derivative jumps. Ah, good, good point, good point. Actually, they modified. Yeah, that's a really excellent point. I, I write it this way, but this is kind of operator. And uh, if we have some, we are now taking like a one loop correction, right? And then Einstein equation, right, it's modified. G menu, and it's like a, right, and a cosmological constant, but uh, I mean, you have an energy stress test. And this is a expectation value, in quantum expectation value. And this, yeah, a little bit this modified. This is excellent. I, I just didn't mention it because it's, so this part actually, there are contribution from this part because the surface shifts by, uh, because of this one loop effect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now yes, go back. But now the story is quite classical. And uh, so we have some entanglement to H and the uh, next question is that maybe we can think about some new interesting geometrical quantity. But if we look at this, it looks like one four, right? And uh, if we assume this part is uh, eliminated, it's a wormhole which connects A and B, then natural thing is just look at some cross-section, minimum cross-section. So which we, let's define just a sigma AB. Let's just call this a sigma AB. So you have some wormhole, right? How much they are connected, measured by the, this minimum area, right? Minimum cross-section area. If this is zero, it's essentially the same as this imagery information zero, there's no connection at all, right? But this is actually independent. This, this area, we can now come up with this area of this guy, is independent from this enter, uh, sorry, mutual information. If this is zero, this is also zero, but uh, no, no other connection. It's so quantitatively different. So it's quite interesting to ask about it. So we, we are thinking about this situation, and uh, so we have MAB is separated into two, two parts, which we call maybe, uh, yeah, A maybe, but the A part and B part, right? So this is the A part, this A maybe A part, and this is the B part. <coughs> and uh, this boundary of A maybe A is just uh, uh, includes so there are, so boundary is like this, right? This region is like boundary, this plus, this plus, this plus, but it includes uh, A and sigma, AB, and the B is similar, right? If we say, this, we just replace with this B. And we are interested in this minimum area. So you can think this way, also you can separate, but this is definitely, this is a, has a smaller area. And we keep this AB as a minimum area. It's a, so this is a kind of cross-section. So we, we can define this quantity. We can introduce this quantity. This is related to some density matrix rho AB in CFT side. It's given by four times G Newton and the area of this sigma AB. So always it is good to divide the area by four G Newton. This is a, just what we learn from Bekenstein Hawking formula. So this is some new quantity. This is independent from a holographic entanglement. And we define this as an entanglement. We, let's call this a cross section. So this is, seems to be one of the most natural quantity we can associate with entanglement wedge. So the next question, what does this mean? Okay. And then I will give some answer to this question. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Sorry, what do you mean? So A and B are connect, uh, connected through this entanglement wedge. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Are more than hmm. Ah, then it's zero. That's zero. Yeah, right. 
And uh, so that our, we have some conjecture of this. This conjecture is like this EW rho AB equal to some nice quantity called entanglement purification, which is purely defined in CFT side. And I will explain the definition of this guy. <coughs> so def of, this is called EOP, entanglement of purification. So it's written there in the title. So this is, is an idea. So anyway, we are talking on mixed state. As already mentioned, for mixed state, we cannot use von Neumann entropy as the counting of EPR pairs. We cannot be easy to get some entanglement measure. But we can think of the following kind of uh, intuitive argument that maybe if we purify the system, once we purify the system, we can measure amount of entanglement by von Neumann entropy. So let's do this. So purify means, so we have some rho AB. So we start with Hilbert space, rho HA times HB, right? But, so anyway, this is rho AB. So we some enlarge, we consider larger Hilbert space is called, maybe you can put HC. But let's decompose the HC into HA prime times HB prime. Let's decompose, this is quite useful for later purpose. So of course, the result depend on the composition. But anyway, let, let's ask that later. And then, if you have a enough larger space, always you can pur purify the mixed state. So it's like, it's written in terms of some A prime, B prime, trace, but some single wave function. So this, this, uh, this silver space includes one, some wave function, so A, B, A prime, B prime. And then we can have this. And then, so under this condition that we define entanglement purification as follows. EP is defined as minimum of something more precise infinite. Infinima, but you can regard as some minimum. And uh, so this is a minimum of quantity, it's just von Neumann entropy, S A A prime. <laughs> computed for this state psi, right? So with this condition, for any choice of psi purification, A, B, A prime, B prime, which satisfy, of course, this should be satisfied. And uh, this, con so the problem is that here, there are many different uh, purifications. So it, 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 there are many candidates of purification. There are infinitely many. Because we just require this condition and you can allow any HG. But, uh, so, but we want just one quantity, so we minimize it. This is a basic idea. And uh, it is known in quantum information, so this has a nice property. But unfortunately, I should mention, this is not rigorous uh, entanglement measure. This is a measure of correlation. Measure of correlation. So that means it includes some classical contributions. Nevertheless, it has some nice property. And uh, we also have a more, I mean, better, pro better measure of entanglement, namely, for example, squashed entanglement and so on. But this also involves minimum of something. So this is kind of toy version of the, such a minimum minimization procedure. So it's quite interesting to look at this quantity. But actually, this turns out to be the, uh, as the same property as this entanglement wedge cross-section. So that's the reason why we argue. This equality, maybe I can give some two basic. In fact, there are many properties, but I, I don't have enough time, so please look at paper if you are interested. But the first one is a trivial one. This is a, if you assume rho AB is pure, pure state is always any measure that reduces to von Neumann entropy. Then, EP, e, rho AB, is just reduced to SA, which is equal to SB. And this is well known for this formulation. This is very obvious, because we don't need to purify it. And then, this, this is actually related to cross-section, but this is right, because we have A and B, and they are next to each other, no other space. Like if they are extra parts, then rho AB is not pure. So then, of course, 
this is a full space is an entanglement wedge. So the minimal cross section of VR3 is standard minimal surface. So that way, this is this property is obviously matched. And second one is a non-trivial inequality, which is quite interesting. So it's, we know AP rho AB is bounded from above as a half of mutual information. This is a, a easy to prove by from this formula by using sort of strong subjectivity kind of argument. And the holographic homia also should satisfy this, but this is very easy to see this. So you can imagine, I guess, similar setup, A, B, okay? and we have some connected surface, <coughs> and we have uh, some cross section, which calls sigma A, B. Maybe let us call, so we have some minimal surface here, which is gamma A, gamma B, and we call the other part, like this part is maybe gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma four. And then obviously we can understand that area of sigma AB is bounded, this area is bounded by this summation of three surfaces. This is a very, very standard geometrical fact, triangular inequality. So gamma A one and gamma, gamma three, right? And we can have a similar inequality for other part, right? For, for this part. So it's bounded by rho AB uh, as a gamma B and gamma, gamma other things, two and four, right? And uh, so we know this is gamma AB, right? Entanglement entropy for full system is given by union of these guys, right? So by summing over these two guys, and then what we get? It's, uh, yeah, so we, we get is, uh, ah, sorry, opposite, I, actually, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is opposite, sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry, but this is the same, same logic, same logic, but uh, we can think about this gamma A is bounded by this way, so sorry, this is sigma AB. So this again, so triangle, because this surface area is smaller than this summation. This area is smaller than this, right? So we have this. So otherwise, we, we get different <laughs> inequality. So we, we, anyway, we take some of this, and this summation is just give I A, B, right? So that means, so A sigma A, B is bounded, this is an EOP, is bounded by half, we take a half, sum and take a half. So then it's really gamma A plus gamma B, and gamma A, gamma AB, right? So this, this proves this inequality, right? So it's very easy to show this. <laughs> and of course we need a more evidence, and we have a more inequalities which we can confirm, and they also works well. And <coughs> and even though we don't have enough time to explain, but we can, uh, derive this conjecture by connection between uh, ADS safety and as an argument is like connection between ADS safety and tensor network, tensor network. And another argument is we can also compute this quantity in particular case in using CFT, using as integral optimization. I don't have enough time to explain this, but that's integral optimization. So this is a, my work with uh, Kapta, uh, Miyagi, and Uemoto, and Uemoto. Uh, just last December. If you are interested, please look at this. So there are also, in particular case, we can derive the same result from CFT. <coughs> okay. Yeah, so this is a story of this entanglement wedge and entanglement cross-section. And this is, gives some new quantity because they, this, this surface don't attach at the boundary. So this sense is quite new. Like minimum surface is really end on the boundary, but this is don't attach. So it's like more bulk quantity. So it's quite interesting to look, look into more. Okay, and using some rest of time, I just quickly want to explain 
some uh, dynamical aspects of entanglement entropy. The uh, simplest example is the evolution of entanglement entropy and uh, uh, quantum quenches, local quenches. This is a special kind of quantum quench. <coughs> so you can regard basically this as a local excitation. At some particular time, we suddenly locally excite the system. And we can think about different, three different uh, local quenches. So first one is the most simple one, is a local operator, local operator. So we just insert local operator. At t equals zero, t less than t, zero is just vacuum, but we act some local operator at t equals zero. And see time evolution. Another one, this is first introduced, uh, Nozaki and Masawa and myself, strike. Well, you can look at this. And then another one is a, a local, this is local quench, but this is kind of joining procedure. So that means we start with some semi-infinite, two copy of semi-infinite conformer, 2D conformer fuel theory, and attach end point at t equals zero. Suddenly attach end point at t equals zero. So again, this has some local excitations. And also we can think about opposite procedure, which is, this is first considered by Calabrese Hardy. Uh, 2007. So we recently considered the opposite procedure is like splitting. Actually, these three are quite interesting if we think about holographic dual. So that's why I finally would like to mention. So this is t, t great, this less than zero, so it's just connected, just vacuum state, but suddenly they split out, just cut at some point, and, and have a individual time evolution by individual Hamiltonian. And late. So we see, and uh, if we look at, the, if we compute the entanglement entropy, how entanglement entropy evolves, that's the question, basically. <laughs> and that's directly related to how space-time evolves in uh, ADS safety dictionary. But we have to be careful, the results really depend on the conformal fuel theory we are looking at. Even though we are looking at one single interval entanglement, we just, let's focus on simple case, reg subsystem A, it's bounded by some, uh, describe some interval, but this is not ground state, but excited state. The result highly depends on the class of conformal fuel cell. And uh, especially the theory is integrable or chaotic. They are so different. Especially the first one is so different. For rational conformal fuel cell, I'm not going to details, but if you compute this, it this behaves like this way. So we excite some point at t equals zero, right? So we excite this point. Then once you insert some local operator, then you create some EPR pair, sort of EPR pair. Details are dependent on theory. Then this propagates, this EPR pair propagates. So once this guy, pro one is here, this goes at the speed of light. The other guy somehow come into region A, right? Then non-trivial non entanglement is observed. So that sense another time evolution, non-trivial entropy, and if they pass through, then nothing. So, only non-trivial entropy is observed within this time range, time region. So then, if we plot for rational conformal fuel theory, like Ising model or free scalar, it's all, always like this, like this. This is just finite amount, finite amount, finite. And this is actually equal to something called log of a quantum dimension. The operator, for each operator in 2D safety, we can associate in rational conformal fuel theory, we can associate some quantity called quantum dimension, and that appears, I think, in Xiao Gan Wen's talk a few days ago. But uh, we are not actually interested in other theory, more holographic theory, which is more, I mean, chaotic. So that case, this is a, we just have a very small amount of entanglement increase because theory is integral, and each sector is a decoupler. But if we think about holographic theory, it, one sector ex excitation in one sector affects other sector and so on. So there are strong, in, strong interactions. And the result is so different. So then, so we can think about the uh, 
So this is a setup. Setup. So now we, we can think of a CFT uh, calculation. So I'm, I'm not going to details, but just want to say a few words on this. So for number one, this is a local operator case. Dens reduced density matrix looks like this. Uh, again, we have some cut here, region A, and operator we put in a symmetric way, right? So we, we are thinking about the excitation, which is given by vacuum, acted by some local operator, and we, some, we need some always some regularization because we cut it out. Local operator is so singular, right? If they are close to each other, they get two-point function gets divergent. So we have to regulate this parameter, let's call alpha. So this is a, a setup in the local excitation. We can compute, in principle, applying replicatoric for this case, for this setup. So it's like, in the end, you end up with two endpoint function, right? Or replica computation, two endpoint function on this manifold, which you call a sigma n, right? Or range entropy, endless range entropy. And uh, so we can do also the second case, this joining case. This looks like, now this looks like, uh, like this. So it's joined, at some point it's joined. So initially they are uh, separated, like this. So we put some, this kind of cut. And again, we put some regularization alpha. So we are considering this pass integral on this region and with some cut A, right, as, as before. So always cut A is here. And for this, we can apply conformal map into upper half plane because it's a boundary, right? So we have some just upper half plane. It's a boundary. And, and so, Third case, we can have a similar situation, but a little bit different. Uh, maybe I, I should write this here. So third case is like splitting, right? It's the opposite. So this case, pass integral looks like this. We cut in the middle, right? So we suddenly separate the two regions. So this is a pass integral, and this is again region A is here. And also, we can apply some conformal mapping up to some upper half plane. So this, for example, this map looks like this. So this, uh, this coordinate is W, and this is a xi coordinate. We have a similar map here. And this, you can look at the, our latest paper by Maji, our graduate student, and Wei, and myself. This also includes many reviews, including these area works. So now we go to holographic side. So in principle, you can compute, you know, using twist operator language, and by using conform map, you can compute entanglement entropy. But now we go to the holographic side, which is maybe more interesting. So how geometrically we, we have this kind of setups. Viewers. So first one, local operator quench, local operator. This is actually simply written this way, following way. So we have some Poincaré ADS and Z direction. And this actually, the previous map between global radius and Poincaré ADS comes into play. So this is the parameter alpha, right? They are regularization parameter. And that's actually related energy scale. If we put some massive particle here, energy scale depends on the location because the metric looks like this, right? So the, actually this position is alpha. We put massive object, massive particle here, and see some time evolution. This is as already explained in the 
Earth lecture today. So it's like we have trajectory. There are strong gravitational force towards this horizon, so they're falling, this falling particle. Actually, this explains the energy stress as well as entanglement entropy behavior. Because it's, anyway, we act local operator, but we smeared a little bit. Right? We smeared roughly scale alpha, otherwise it's very singular. So this is exactly the same as putting massive object here. <coughs> so we can compute entropy by using this. And now we go to the second and third setup. For that, actually, we need to introduce boundary. Right, so we need, a, this uh, we can discuss in the same time. We need, we need boundary, conformal boundary. We need uh, some conformal boundaries. So we, 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 what we consider is a conformal field theory with, on uh, some manifold with boundaries. So this is called BCFT, boundary conformal field theory. So we apply the formalism of something we call ADS-BCFT. So this is developed with Fujita and Eric Tony here and myself. It's like you can look at this. So this is, useful. we can use this holographic construction is boundary. So the idea is very simple. So originally we have ADS-CFT so we have, a, let's assume, some Poincaré ADS, but we uh, just want to restrict particular region, right? particular region of this space, and there are some boundary. So this is a boundary here. And we are interested in conformal field theory on disk. On, on disk. Then, one well, effective way to describe some bottom-up up, up approach to describe holographic uh, dual space-time is just focus on this boundary and extend in the bulk. So we have some surface which we call Q. This might, you might think this looks very similar to holographic entanglement entropy, but this is so different. This is different in that this boundary surface is very important, and this is not like probe approximation. This is really boundary surface back reacts. It's dynamical, this is dynamical. And we impose, here, we impose Neumann boundary condition of gravity, in gravity, ADS gravity. So namely, that is the following expression. This is an ex extrinsic curvature. This K is extrinsic. So this K mu nu and the side stress is K and H mu nu is the induced metric on this Q, this other metric. And this is, simple cases we can set this zero. But uh, there are some one more parameter if we want to put some tension parameter, which is like, this tension parameter is just tension, tension of this boundary surface. But once we admit this formula, we can actually show that this uh, preserves half of the conformal symmetry, namely, that gives boundary conformal field theory. So this is also, I mean, same as the boundary condition we have in brain world set up like Randall, Sandram, and so on just come from the einstein hilbert action plus Gibbons hawking term. This is the only, this are two, there are some two consistent boundary conditions. One is this Neumann boundary condition, another one is just Dirichlet boundary condition. We fix particular metric. This is usually we take in ADS safety. So if we have, at this boundary, ADS boundary, we normally take this Dirichlet boundary condition, but on this dynamical surface, we impose Neumann boundary condition. Then, and many things work well, like including some G theorem, such a monotonicity theorem and so on. But I don't have time to look at that. But anyway, so by using this framework, so we can apply this framework to these guys, easy, because we know the answer here. Upper half plane is just dual to half of Poincare ADS. We just cut it into half. And we can do, we can get back to this complicated geometry by conformal mapping, and they're analog of conformal map, mapping is called, in holography, called the Bernadotte map. Anyway, we do this. Then what we find, it's a little bit interesting. And in, first of all, I, I, I want to say this, these two guys give the exactly same metric. You can find this metric in the bulk, same metric. But of course, they are so different physics, right? One is separating, one is joining, and so it's so different. 
And difference comes from the different choice of Q. So let's focus on first, second case, which looks like, which looks like this. So we have, so the idea is using, again, so we start with somehow Euclidean path integral, and at t equals zero, we go on a low range time evolution. So the physical space is applied. This is like hartle hawking wave function construction. So we, we take this real time evolution. So we are interested in this upper region in this setup. So then what we find, this boundary surface is quite dynamical, and it's like this way. So this is the x direction, this is the x direction, and this is the time direction, and this is the z direction. And boundary surface is something like this, something like this, and going like this. In the end, the approach is this narrow direction. It's narrow curve. So this is a, a case, second case. This is quite natural because uh, right, after later time, well, so initially they are separated, and at some t equals zero, suddenly join. So in the bulk space time, it looks like this. There are some cut here. And the physical space is like here, and this is the z direction, and these guys right, disappear at later time because the, we take a long time after uh, we took a long time after this joining procedure. And the third case, so exactly the same metric. So here, metric is the same as the second case, but the choice of surface is different. <coughs> so what we find is actually, we have the same surface actually like this. This is also very important. Same surface is there. But actual boundary surface is uh, here, it's like this way. So it's like this. It's attached to here. There are two boundary surfaces. This guy is another guy just next to each other. So this is, so you can understand this following way. So initially we, we have separate. This is a kind of splitting quench, right? And initially we split the space, right? And uh, then there are some surfaces which connect these guys. This is opposite to this picture. Here it's like going this way. But this is a boundary. And this splitting, after just split it, this propagates at the speed of light into the bulk. So in the end, completely disconnected space we have. So this really, again, this tip is propagates at the speed of light. So this tip is like Z is like T. And we know this precise curve. This is like, you can write, this way to t square and plus alpha square and the square root alpha square plus 40 square. So we can explicitly work out. And here it's an interesting thing is that this surface has some meaning. So if we, these two points are identified. If we go reach, somehow observe reach this point, this is the same as this one. This part is empty. Inside is empty, it suddenly warped into the other side. This, is, this surface means that. And the boundary surface, Q is here. So there are two, two guys, because we have this part is we can call Q plus, and the other guy Q minus. So this is so different. So if we think about entanglement entropy, right? so for example, let's take a subsystem A to be very large. This is actually quite a simple setup. So we start with some interval, right, region A, A, B, but let's take big or infinity. So this covers half of the space time, and then we see some very characteristic but simple behavior. So if we think that way, this end point, and we have end point here, and end point go this way, and in, in the end, end on this region Q. So it's like this, so this, we can end on this region Q for, for, to compute entanglement entropy. And here, if you have some point here, like a boundary point, then it can end on this boundary of Q. But this is not correct, actually. Naively, if we think this way, or maybe this way, just this way, it's, we don't get correct answer. That's finally I mentioned, and just finish. So this four, four, this holographic entanglement entropy calculation under local quench. And let's take the following limit. So A is positive, but T is in the intermediate, but B, B is so large, right, so that it covers almost half space. Region A, subsystem A is almost half space, 
and take a time is an intermediate. This is most interesting point, interesting time, time zone. And then this local operator case, we find entanglement entropy is uh, actually computed as a connected surface. And it's like log six C over six and log And log t, t over alpha, this is a characteristic log t behavior, logarithmic growth, so different from rational conform field theory. And c, and this is a uh, quite normal term, right? static entanglement entropy. And the second case, this is a join, joining case. We have actually entropies dominated by disconnected uh, geodesic and T over epsilon, but in this case a double log. We get a double log time evolution, alpha. Epsilon is a standard lattice constant, alpha is a regulator special to this local operator, uh, sorry, local quench, local excitation. <coughs> and then, yeah, so, th so yeah, we have this, and the, uh, so sorry, we have one more term, six log b over epsilon, and the finally, for this splitting quench, actually, it, we don't have a logarithmic divergence. This again, it's related to disconnected, but uh, we have two contributions, connected and disconnected, and we should choose minimum one, just following holographic entanglement entropy. This case is just constant. But the ratio appears, but it's constant. So finally, I'd like to explain why this kind of behavior appears in this holographic setup. <coughs> so it seems that, for example, if you compute energy stress tensor, which is really behavior at near the boundary, this three, three theory is really the same energy stress tensor. You excite some two, one point, then energy increases, and time evolution, after time evolution, you get a two peak, right? Because one of the excitation go to left and right, just go this. Energy stress tensor is all the same, but the entanglement entropy are so different. So this is because we are, of course, different state we are considering, but also number of log has a, some simple interpretation in terms of holography. So I just want to come back. So let's focus, first start with the second case. And we can go back to first case, but this second case is quite nice. So we have a boundary. So we have a ADS boundary, and this is a Z direction, right? And we have a entangling surface, sorry, boundary surface Q, right? By ADS BCFT. And we have some A is here, and zero is here, and B is, let's take B is here, right? Then we see this disconnected, uh, Geodesic, we see one of them is going here, another one is going this, roughly speaking. This is not so interesting, but this guy is quite interesting. If you go back to this geometrical picture, and uh, let us remember that Poincare patch don't comp uh, is not complete, that actually global patch is given by this global ADS metric. So we can write this way. This is the global. So this previous picture, Right, Poincare picture only covers part of here. But actually, this uh, heavy object, so we interact, introduce is pass through in the really center, and we can easily go out of the uh, horizon. But anyway, so let's talk about this geodesic first. So this is A point is actually going here. It's very close to the boundary. So this is ta, T, tau equal one half, and here it's like, Please remember previous. And that case, and the tip, we are now talking the tip of this uh, boundary surface, it's go this way. Uh, this is the same, same thing as this trajectory. So this trajectory is essentially equal to this trajectory. Trajectory tip of this guy, tip of this guy. And uh, then it passes through the center. So if we look at this, if we only look at this picture, so we can maybe just, we need to compute this one length. Maybe it goes to infinity, but just compute this. That's only explain fast contribution. 
So we, we, miss, we are missing the second contribution. And if this extended picture, actually, this is very similar, so very easy. So this connected end on the boundary, this is a tip, tip of Q. And we have two regions, right? Inside Poincare patch and outside of Poincare patch. And this guy gives log T over epsilon, first time. And the second guy gives log over T over alpha. So there are two, that's the reason we have double log contribution. B, we have B, but it's just end on here, but it's not so interesting. This doesn't have any, it's inside Poincare patch. So this guy is not interesting. This guy gives this two, two contribution. <laughs> and if you go back to first case, because of the similar issue, because of also back reaction, we see that these two points, so we connect this. This case is, of course, no boundary, so we, all have, we have to think about connected geodesic right, between these two boundary points. And then, so we see that, so we connect these two points, this is A and B is here, and it's actually going out of one culture and coming back. So because of the existence of this region, we have one logarithmic contribution. This gives actually, you can see, this gives logarithmic contribution. But no other contribution. <coughs> and finally, if you see the splitting case, then, so you can write this similar picture. So this is at zero and A and B is very, very large. And so this boundary surface is sitting here. This is the boundary Q. And we have, this is a trivia. This surface is very trivia, no, nothing interesting. And the boundary surface of B is like end on this point, this tip. Maybe it looks interesting, but we can see this only generates logarithmic enhancement, but no time evolution, just, just produce this term. So this is uh, just explain these contributions. So this is, uh, sorry, this is alpha. So this basically come from <coughs> this picture. Ah, sorry, sorry, this is not true, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. This is A. This is just come from this part. Right? This length is just log of A. This is standard result. And uh, so this part is related to this guy. Well, maybe we can think this way. So we start with three divided by two B epsilon. That is a full length, right? Full length, just standard static formula. And we have some time evolution, which maybe come from here, T over alpha. But however, we have to subtract this contribution, right? This contribution both are the low, so it's like they cancels. Well, you can think this way. Anyway, so this gives a contribution which is related to alpha. So in this way, we can explain the uh, time evolution of this local quench. And it's, uh, its characteristic behavior is especially first case, includes all cases, but the first case includes logarithmic growth. But this is missing in an integrable conformal fuel cell. <coughs> I just quickly. Just for example, free, 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 free boson, free scalar CFT, 2D CFT. Right? So this case, you can think about operator quench, operator quench, which is given by this following state. Right? So we have some exponential I phi plus exponential I minus phi and act it on the vacuum. You can compute entanglement entropy. And in this case, there are no logarithmic growth because this is nothing related to holographic CFT. In this case, you find that at some point A, you have just constant shift, and if we compute carefully, this is precisely equal to log two. Log two, maybe I, we can come up with a simple example, like EPR pair. Indeed, this is an EPR pair. The reason why we have an EPR pair here is you can regard as a, we are now decomposing Hilbert space in the A and B, roughly this way, half, half, right? So that case, this is left moving particle a uh, right moving particle going here and the left moving particle going here. So it's like left to right entanglement. So you can regard I phi as a, you can regard I phi left moving part right moving, right? This is usually conformal fuel theory. Then, so this first one, let's call this guy is up spin. 
and uh, minus phi is a down spin, then this state is just equivalent to uh, EPL state. This is square root of two, and up, up spin, and down, down spin. Indeed, this log two come from this entangled state. But this is a very nice, very simple, because we can, this is a free theory, we can decompose into many different sectors, and they don't talk with each other. But the, in holographic EFT, it's quite more chaotic. And in the end, we find logarithmic growth. It's very, very much larger than that. And also depend on the cutoff scale. So really, this, I mean, holographic safety is so different from integral safety. Sorry, I, I extended time, but sorry, I'm sorry, but I think I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so...